everyone. In this video, we'll be looking at rates of reactions, uh, which is a, a pretty interesting topic, and uh, we'll go through it step by step. All right. Okay, so the learning outcomes from this uh, video would be you will be able to find out how to determine the rate of a reaction. So because we are talking about because this falls under chemistry, we'll be looking at chemical reaction. So you will see how to determine the rate of a chemical reaction. And then we'll also look at the ways or the factors that that affect the rate of a reaction. Okay, so there are certain factors we'll look into certain we'll look into all the factors that concern uh, with regard to the or uh, would change the rate of a reaction. All right. So first of all, now in chemical in chemical reactions there are uh, different chemical reactions in the world that you can uh, do and that are being done. So in most of the in all, I would say in all of the chemical reactions that happen in the world, the most important thing that uh, any person who conducts a chemical reaction does is he would look at the uh, observations that he can see throughout the uh, chemical reaction. So if I say uh, in certain reactions there would be gases produced, in certain reactions there would be uh, color changes, and in certain reactions there can be uh, some other new product form uh, which you would see uh, within the testing test tube or something like that. All right. So the first part now, for example, say you are reacting uh, a metal and an acid. So we know when we react a metal and an acid, you are getting a salt and hydrogen gas. So how do we det determine or how do you observe or how do we know that a gas is being produced? So the only way we can we know that a gas is produced is that within the reacting vessel, if we see bubbles being produced, that means we know a gas is produced or evolved, we could say. So the rate, okay, uh, the rate at which now, for example, if a reaction happens, if you take a very reactive metal and you react with a very reactive uh, strong acid, you will see a lot of bubbles being produced in a short span of time. So the rate at which bubbles produce, you can determine, okay, uh, the rate of that particular reaction. If the bubbles are produced at a higher rate, that means the rate of the reaction is very high. If the bubbles are produced at a lower rate, that means the uh, rate of the reaction is slow. All right. And also, as I said, there can be uh, other reactions where there are color changes. So, for example, most of the displacement reactions, you would definitely see this. Okay. So, how quickly does the now, for example, if initially, so here in the example, you say initially the solution is blue in color. And then after some time, it becomes to a different color. So in that case, we know, we know that there is a, a change in the, there's, a, there's been a new product being formed. And also we can determine the rate of the reaction by uh, validating it with regard to time. We can measure how long does it take for this blue color to change into this uh, green uh, color solution. So that you, you can conduct for any experiment, uh, not only this uh, with the iron nail, but any other experiment you can do and you can see. Even in precipitation reactions, you can see, uh, you can determine the rate of, the, of that reaction by uh, counting down or timing the uh, time taken for the precipitate to be formed. Okay, so these are simple ways that you can determine the rate of a reaction in uh, chemistry. All right. Then now we knew we know now how to determine the rate of a reaction, but uh, certain reactions are there in the world where um, uh, we want to alter the natural rate of the reaction uh, according to our needs. Okay, so certain reactions there are there are certain reactions that happen too slow. Then we are we are trying to make some alterations and make it work at a faster rate. Or maybe if the reaction is too fast, you want to make it at a slower rate. So because of that, there are certain factors where you can change or alter those factors and uh, alter the rate of the reaction. So some of the factors are, 
surface area. If you, if you change the surface area for a reactant, you can achieve it. If you change the temperature, you can achieve it. If you change the concentration of the pressure, also you can um, change the effect uh, or you can change the rate of the reaction. And also the use of a catalyst. We'll discuss what catalyst is uh, in the, uh, or we'll discuss all of these factors in the upcoming slides in detail. The first thing is surface area. Now, what do, what do you mean by surface area means? Surface area is with, is with regard to the uh, size of the reacting substance. So for example, in this diagram, what we have given here is, we have given on the left side of your screen, you will find these balls like things. So these are, these are actually sodium hydroxide pellets. All right, the sodium hydroxide pellets. And on the, on the right hand side, you can see sodium hydroxide powder form. So if you if you consider the powder form and the pellet form, you would definitely understand that the powder form has more surface area because, it's, because if you take a certain amount of uh, sodium hydroxide powder and you spread over a surface, you will see it will uh, encross a large amount of surface. Uh, with, uh, with regard to the pellet form of the sodium hydroxide, which is, it does not acquire that amount of uh, surface area. So what happens when the surface area is greater? Why do we say uh, that when the surface area is greater, the reaction rate increases? Is because the reactants are able to collide with the other reactants more frequently. Because as the surface area increases, the chances of it being uh, able to react with other reactants is much more greater. So that's why uh, the powder form, or if you increase the surface area, you are able to uh, perform the reaction at a greater rate. All right. So that is a bit uh, simple. It's all about surface area. Okay. Second one is temperature. So temperature, what happens with temperature is now, for example, if you have a particular uh, substance in your reacting method and you're reacting it, and the rate of the particular reaction is not that uh, acceptable, so we want to, so what we are doing is we are heating the vessel. So what happens when you heat the vessel? These molecules, these reacting molecules within the vessel, they gain energy. So when they gain energy, what they will do is they will accelerate from one place to another. And because they gain energy and they move from one place to another, they would collide with each other and with the reacting vessel balls. So as a result, the reaction will happen at a faster rate because the frequency of the successful collisions will increase, all right? But if you lower the temperature, what will happen? That means we are not giving energy to these reacting molecules, but we are, but the molecules are losing the energy. So that means they don't have the, the sufficient kinetic energy to move around and collide with each other more frequently and cause the reaction. So, with regard to temperature, what we are looking at is at uh, the successful collisions between reactive molecules. If the uh, frequency of the successful collisions increases, we are able to increase the rate of the reaction. If the uh, collisions do not happen very frequently, then the reaction is has a very uh, happens at a very slow lower pace. So that's the uh, concept with regard to um, temperature. All right, let's move on to the next one. So next one is concentration and pressure. Now, for example, now this, this can be thought of a very uh, uh, easy and a real life in a, in a very practical way. Okay, so for example, now here also in this example, what I have given is I put this, now these are the, now these balls represent some reacting uh, substance. Okay, so there are an equal number of balls in this small container and also in this large container. Okay, so now in this small container, now the surface area is small of the container. So what will happen? When these reactants start moving, they have the lead. They will collide with each other more frequently because they don't have any uh, free space to go or something like that. They will always come and collide with each other more frequently. But what happens if the uh, other large vessel. So other, the large vessel will have low amount of pressure. Why low amount of pressure? Because the 
uh, reactive molecules do not collide with each other more frequently because they have plenty amount of space to go here and there. So they are, so we don't have an assurance that it will always collide with the reactive molecule. It will, it can collide with the walls. It can not collide at all. It can just, you know, pass the molecule and go because there's enough of space to go. Okay, so that's the thing with regard to concentration of pressure. Now, why do we have two terms, concentration and pressure? So, for example, gases. Okay, for example, gases. We normally uh, speak about gases with regard to pressures. Okay, because gases they are free to move. They are uh, they can move freely. That's the way their atoms are being composed. The composition of the atoms are, are such that they can move very freely. So most of the time, and you don't see any gas, you, you don't see it very often living with your naked eye. So we um, refer it in terms of pressure. But if you want to uh, use this concept in terms of a liquid, we definitely can use concentration. And then we can say, OK, this amount of concentration in this one and something like that. So concentration is used for liquids and also in solids. But pressure, we will uh, use in for gases. But the concept behind this will be same. Where we say, if you uh, if the greater greater the concentration of pressure, greater the rate of reaction. Why? Because there are more frequent collisions between particles. Lower the concentration of pressure, there will be less amount of collisions between the reacting particles, and as a result, it will result in a low rate of uh, reaction. Okay, so that is the uh, whole idea of this. Um, uh, concentration and pressure. All right. So move to the last one, which is which we are going to talk about catalyst. Now catalyst is actually a chemical substance. Okay, uh, it's a chemical substance. Uh, there are, there are different types of catalysts. There are biological catalysts. If you are doing biology, you would know there are biological catalysts. There are catalysts inside your body also. But here we will speak about. Um, we don't. We are not going to go into biological things. We can stick uh, uh, knowledge only to onto chemistry. So, in general, catalyst is a substance that speeds up a chemical reaction, but does not take part in the reaction nor change after the reaction is completed. That means it acts as just a booster. It just boosts the uh, rate of the reaction, but does not take part. That means it won't form any products or something other. Like if for example, if I take an, if I give an example, if we say if we take a, if we take a catalyst to be A, at the beginning of the reaction, at the end of the reaction also it will remain to be A. It won't change to any other new product or something like that. Okay, its sole purpose will be to increase the rate of a chemical reaction. That's it. Okay, that's a good part. He does not take part in the reaction at all. And now here in this diagram, you would see something called we are. Uh, so these are two curves you can see here. So this black color curve is the curve that is the reaction of an uncatalyzed reaction. That means no catalyst has been added to that reaction. So you can see it has a very huge hump. So from here now you can see there's a black arrow, vertical black arrow pointing from the x-axis to the uh, point of the hump, right? It's a, there's a big arrow. So this part is normally called activation energy. Okay, what is activation energy? Activation energy is the minimum amount of energy required to start a reaction. So if you have a certain reaction, you need to apply some amount of energy for it to start. Okay, so that is the activation energy. So with regard, if you catalyze a particular reaction, if you had a catalyst to a particular reaction, you can see that the activation energy drops or the activation energy is slow. That means what does that mean? That means when the catalyst is added, the energy we require to start a reaction decreases. So because of that, we are able to perform the or achieve the particular products at a faster rate. All right, because we don't we are not spending lots of time to uh, start the reaction. The reaction happen, starts very quickly. And then um, we are able to uh, achieve what we want in a short span of time. So that is the whole uh, 
idea of catalyst, the catalyst. So basically what the catalyst does is it flows the activation energy. Or we can say it catalyst provides an alternative path for the reaction to happen at a lower uh, time span, or at a faster rate. All right. So that is the whole idea of the catalyst. So that's that's it for this video. So in this video, we discussed about um, we discussed about the ways we can determine the rate of reaction. We saw the displacement reactions. We can uh, determine the rate using the color changes. Then there are certain reactions where you can see the bubbles being formed. So the rate at which the bubbles are formed, we can determine from that. And also we discussed about four factors that affect the uh, rate of a reaction. Or we can, in other words, we can say there are four factors that we can alter the rate of the reaction according to our uh, needs. All right, so surface area was one. We said that if you increase the surface area, the greater the contact of the reacting uh, molecules, therefore the rate of the reaction will increase. If you, and then we spoke about temperature. Temperature was, we said that if you increase the temperature, the successful collisions with, with regard to the reacting molecules will be high and there will be the rate, will, therefore the rate will be uh, higher and the reaction will happen at a short span of time. And then with regard to pressure and concentration, well, we had the same principle in mind. We said, if you increase the pressure and you, or if you increase the concentration, the reactive molecules will collide with each, with each other more frequently. And therefore the rate of the reaction will increase. And finally, we arrived at catalysts. So catalyst, we said, catalyst is a chemical substance which does not take part in the reaction, nor change after the reaction. So its sole purpose is to bring down the activation energy. Activation energy is the energy used to start a particular reaction. So uh, that is the whole idea. So these are the factors and these are the ways that you can determine the rate of a chemical reaction. So hope you understood what I explained in this video and I'll meet you soon in another video. Thank you so much.